You've just uh, written a piece on afl.com.au. In fact, this has just dropped now, and this is big. Uh, tell us about GWS and their links to Chad Wingard from Hawthorne. Yeah, got a bit of interest in Chad. Obviously, Bobby Hill will probably get to Essendon in the last three days of the trade period. So I think they're just looking at alternatives. If Bobby was to go, Chad Wingard's cropped up on their radar. Um Still a long way to go on this one and still a lot to play out because Chad's been very vocal in the last couple of months that he wants to stay at Hawthorne. He was very vocal on Friday afternoon. He posted the uh, I'm not leaving clip and on from Wolf of Wall Street on his Instagram account. So oh, it's uh, I get the sense that he doesn't want to go. He's contracted for another two years, um, but the Giants will try and um, tempt him up there to a third AFL club. There's, as we mentioned, though, a, a lot to play out in this one and it'll all hinge on whether or not he actually wants the move. I think if he says that there's some way where he wants to explore his options and potentially go to the Giants, then I think there's a, a passage for this one to get done. Uh, it just If he says no and, and uh, digs his heels in, though, it becomes very difficult for the Giants. So can the Giants get Lobb and Wingard mm. and fit them both in? Well... I mean, if you had have asked me two, two weeks ago, I would have said absolutely not because everyone you spoke to said the Giants were so tight in their salary cap. But it looks like Lobb's going to take a pretty significant pay cut. It looks like if the – I think the, the, the Chad Wingard deal would be very much dependent on um, Hawthorne, Hawthorne paying a significant mm. part of his salary. And, and should that be the case, I've included it in the article, there's been a bit of talk that the, the, the Giants might actually stump up in terms of a draft pick what the Hawks were, would want for Chad Wingard. And he turns 29 next year, so you might say, well, a first-round pick, would you, would you give that up for Chad Wingard? But – you probably would if it comes down to the fact that Hawthorne pays a pretty significant portion of his salary cap. And this is something that myself and Cal Toomey spoke about last week on Trade Radio, just that there's a new economy now where clubs are sort of paying a bit more in terms of uh, trade capital should they should the opposition side or the side that's giving up a player pay for the salary cap. So it's, it's just another negotiating tool that's been brought into it in the last couple of years in this trade period. Mm. I, reckon I'd, I reckon I'd probably do it if I was the Giants. Like if it was... If I could give up, just say it's pick 13 or, or wherever that pick lands, probably more like 16, isn't it, on, on draft night for Chad Wingard, then mm. I'd be doing that, particularly if Hawthorne are prepared to pay some of the wage, whether that satisfies the Hawks or not. And, you know, I questioned Hawthorne's recruiting recently in terms of the players that they have brought in. Now, they're all up for grabs. So mm. I, I guess Alistair Clarkson's willingness to not rebuild is really hurting them now with O'Meara and Mitchell and Wingard and all players that they've brought in up for grabs. So it's it's a bit uneasy at the Hawks. So you think if you yeah, if you had to say one way or another, one of those big three, be it O'Meara, Mitchell or Wingard, will be there on Wednesday night at Hawthorne. How many do you think are gone? Is it just one or is there the possibility that could be multiple players out the door or may it be none? It might be none, and, and that's just the way it's going to go. I mean, Hawthorne would be keen to offload a couple, I think, to get a, some draft picks in, and they've certainly mentioned that to other clubs. But Chad Wingard's contracted, and the contract pr- protects players in this position just as much as it does clubs when when other teams come to poach them. So Chad Wingard can say, no, look, I'm, I'm happy in Victoria. I want to stay at Hawthorne. I've got two years to run on this contract, and he's there. So, I mean, he, he can really stop this before it even starts. Um, and it's a similar situation for for Tom Mitchell and, and Jay Gromier, who are also both contracted, and for Jack Gunston. So I, I find it difficult to see how any of them get done. I, I, I think if there is one that's going to get done, it could be this Giants one just because they've gone and made the effort and sounded him out and done their due diligence. Mm. All right. What did you make of Bobby Hill saying that uh, he wants to go to Victoria, but I'm only going to Essendon? It's an interesting one. I mean, tensions were frayed, I think, last year between mm. the Bombers and the Giants in regards to the Jai Caldwell deal. So I wonder if there's some lingering animosity there in the last three days of the trade period. Essendon's put on the radar to a number of clubs that they're keen on the small forward. Um, there was a time when we thought it might have been Ben Long from uh, from the Saints that they thought they could remould him into a small forward. Um there was times when we thought they might go to the draft and they might have had a mature age option. Tyson Stengel's emerged on their radar. They, they looked at Malcolm Roses from Gold Coast before he re-signed. So they've been after one for a long time. In, in terms of Bobby Hill, is a very good one. And, and you can see why the Giants wouldn't want to lose him. I think in an ideal world, the Giants probably they grab Rory Lobb from Frio and they keep Bobby Hill. I think that's probably what their their main priority is. But I mean, if he if he wants a trade and, and the, the Bombers are willing to give up something that's going to tempt the Giants, then I think this is one that could get done in the last three days. 
you had an explosive interview with uh, Colin Young, who's yes. up to his eyeballs in this trade period, as as always, uh, on Friday. Uh, what were the, the big takeaways out of what he said? He was reasonably critical of, of Peter Bell. Is, is that fair with how honest he had been with revealing what's going on behind the scenes? Yeah, he went into depth about um, the conversations he'd had with a number of people and um, how he wanted to get Rory Lobb to the Giants and why Rory Lobb wanted to go. It was a pretty insightful chat. It's up as a podcast now, so download it. Um, and listen to it if you missed it because it was pretty insightful 10, 15 minutes with Colin Young. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out because the Dockers, I don't think, are driving this. They they wouldn't mind keeping Rory Lobb and they're happy with him and they, I, I think they've, they've made it pretty clear that if Lobb was to leave, they'd have to bring in a, a Ruck Ford replacement first and there doesn't seem like there's too many on the market at the moment. So... Um, I think they'll find it difficult to do that in three days, given their starting point and just how late this came about. So, do the Giants are confident that it gets done? They're confident they can they can get both Lobb and Wingard through the door. It's just going to be interesting to see how it all plays out because there's a lot of balls in the air at the moment. It's just going to be a big sort of 72 hours to find out how they drop. Now, if there's not enough pressure on being the number one pick in the draft, you've got the added pressure knowing that Adelaide have, have tried mm. to give up three first round draft picks with something back. We understand that for him. This just adds another level of intrigue that usually isn't on the number one pick in the draft. Uh, Adelaide got bold, didn't they, with North Melbourne for their first pick? Yeah, I don't know if this is just me, but the way I read it, I can understand why North's knocked this back. I mean, essentially, as things stand, say that the lattice goes the same way next Mm -hmm. year, the future first they were offered would have been pick 19 from Melbourne and they would have had pick 18 because they were giving up at one of they were giving up there so they're only really moving back um one place there because the, the deal that came with said that North would give back a future second mm. so in essence you you're really only getting Adelaide's future one to move back three or four spots potentially five or six once bids come in on draft night. So I could see why North Melbourne didn't get this back. The the interesting one for me was the Richmond offer that Cal Toomey mm. reported about yesterday. In, in terms of comparing the Adelaide offer and the Richmond offer, I th- actually think Richmond's offer might have stumped up a few more picks plus Cal Coleman Jones. That's the interesting one that they turned down for, for mine. But yeah, look, I, I think North knows that Jason Horn Francis is their man. And, and once you've fallen in love with someone and once you know that they're your, they're your person that you're going to be taking at the draft it'll have to be a massive offer to, for, for you to part with it. I don't think Adelaide's moved the needle too much. Richmond's I probably gave them a little bit more to think about, I'd reckon. But, yeah, look, I, I think now, once they're settled, I think you're going to have to blow them out of the water to, to even consider this from here. Mm, all right. And this Jordan Dawson deal with Adelaide isn't any closer by the sounds of it. And the fact that Adelaide did offer the pick that we all thought they're going to use for yeah. Dawson to North Melbourne for Horn Francis makes it interesting as well. Do you put a deadline on it if you're the Crows and say, look, by five o'clock this afternoon, you've got to get back to us, Sydney. This is the best offer that we've got. If not, we'll turn our attention to the draft, the preseason draft. Well, I think the Swans would have been keen to do one of those deals that emerged on Friday. There, there was a couple there where they were sliding picks around or and, and moving them about in the first round. But Adelaide's just so... Um, insistent that they don't want to give up pick four, which is probably fair enough. Um, that's probably a little bit overs for, for Jordan Dawson's value and they're in the middle of a, of a rebuild themselves, the Crows, so they probably don't want to give up too much there. It's going to be a difficult one to see. Um, my understanding is that Port probably wouldn't go back into the market for him. I think if you're Port, you're probably asking the question though, aren't you? I mean, Absolutely. he fits a need and you're saying, look, we've got this pick right here, Sydney. Like, If you want to deal with us, we can try and change Jordan Dawson's mind because at the moment, there's a lot of people that are saying that this one has pre-season draft sort of um, the lingering over it. And I think that's the last thing you want to do if you're the Swans. You just want to get something through the door. So I, just, I, I can't see how it plays out from here because it seems like they've gone through every sort of situation with the first round pick and we haven't had anything done yet. So I don't know what gets it done from here. Mm, and even read over the weekend that John Longmire picked up the phone and tried to convince him to stay again. Now it, mm. it's happened before, maybe with Papley, but I think he was contracted. So a little bit different and he it appears a long way down the road of deciding on Adelaide. So he, he'll he be at Adelaide by Wednesday night and Adelaide hold all the cards, you would think. Now, Dick, yep. Nick Del Santo is on uh, Trade Radio as we speak. He's mm-hmm. just said Jack Loney is clearly not going back to St Kilda. Uh, he doesn't know where he sits. He did, didn't did hit his contract trigger, and they're not sure who's desperate for a player like that. There, there's a couple of those players, Dumont's in a similar boat. Yep. They're just real uncertain times for players who 
who either don't have a contract or are not feeling the love by their current club. Yeah, it's a tough market at the moment because salary cap is tight around the competition. There's a lot of clubs feeling it at the moment. Also, list sizes are tight. Clubs are just trying to figure out what they do. Um, yeah, Trent DeMont's an interesting one, as you mentioned as well. No contract offer from North Melbourne. There's no contract offer for Jack Loney, Mason Cox, Braden Sire. These are all players without contract offers and without suitors coming forward for them at the moment. So... You'd hope they'd find a home as a delisted free agent if they have to go into the national draft or the rookie draft. Potentially, they find themselves on a rookie list. There's also the the preseason supplemental selection period now as well. So they've got the option of finding a home all the way through to March. So still time for guys like Jack Loney and, and Trent Dumont, and um, particularly for Dumont, I'd, I'd expect he's at a club next year. It's just where at the moment because no one's really stepped forward.